Here we go. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Rajiv Eskana from immigration.com. The law offices of Rajiv Eskana, PC. This is our Thursday conference call, uh, community conference call. Um, the hard stop is at 1.30 p.m. I will address the frequently asked questions in our forums first. And each time I answer a question, I'll ask you if you have a follow-up. No new questions at that time, just follow-ups. And once I've done with all the questions that are posted frequently asked and regular questions, we will then proceed to answer new questions. Somewhere along the line, I'm going to lock the conference because I want to make sure people who are here, their questions get addressed. Um, and when you logged in, you would have heard what the um, disclaimers on this call are. We are basically just uh, offering this as a community service. This does not create an attorney-client relationship. Information is being given as is. We cannot take any guarantees on the short time that we have. So we'll do our best to guide, okay? With that, let me get started. Um, my first frequently asked question is, what do I do when my H-1B project is canceled? Now, this is typically the situation which is more problematic for people who are going from OPT or F1 to H1B. People who are already on H1B, they have a grace period of 60 days. They can convert to B1, B2. Uh, so, uh, the options for people who are on OPT and STEM OPT are a little less unclear. So, let me see exactly what the question is. I am working for company A, company B filed H1B, approval October 1st. Project with company B goes away before October 1st and my company is not going to revoke my visa before October 1st. So the questions that are being uh, propounded after this situation, since I'll automatically move to H1B on October 1st and I don't have that project anymore, can I continue to work for my current employer using the new H-1B? No, you'll have to file for a transfer of H-1B. You cannot continue working for the current employer who did not petition your H-1B um, based upon an approval by another employer. That H-1B has to be transferred to the current employer. Will company A be notified about my new H-1B visa on October 1st? No. This is the company that you're currently working for and the non-petitioning company. No, they will not be informed. Will company A have to rehire me for H-1B transfer or can I continue to work with them while the transfer is pending? So the way I see the law, uh, if the transfer is filed on October 1st, you can continue working because when the transfer is pending, um, and a, an employee is considered to be still maintaining work status. Double check it with your lawyers. That's how I remember the law. Or that's how I, how I remember the regulations. How would it work if I find a new project through a new company C? Would they need to transfer H-1B? Anybody you want to work with on H-1B other than the employer who sponsored you, petitioned for you, will have to start an H-1B transfer. What kind of RFEs may come? Well, you know, any kinds of RFEs can come. Um, I am not sure I can give you a list of all possible RFEs. That's an impossible task. But I, I am concerned, and I have voiced that concern. Um, Pre-2023, we had a different situation. In 23, there was a case decided under very weird circumstances. I'm not sure how far that's going to be a problem for us. Uh, but in that case, the emanations from that case or the ideas that came from that case suggested that if you are not going to work for that employer, if you don't work for that employer uh, on or after October 1st, uh, we may consider you still to be subject to the lottery, which is a very odd decision in my mind. Uh, we have done transfers as long as the H-1B does not get revoked before October 1st, we have done transfers. In a perfect world, at least you would have worked a couple of pay periods for your sponsoring employer before you transferred. 
But if we don't have a choice, we don't have a choice. Then the second best option is that H1 is not revoked and it is transferred, which is what you are going for. So that is the frequently asked questions answer. Okay. Uh, in another five minutes, I'll uh, lock the conference. Do you have any follow-up questions on this? No new questions, only follow-ups. Press star five if you do. Okay, it looks like there are no follow-up questions on this. Uh, let's move on to the next frequently asked question that has been posted. B2 visa dilemma, extend or switch to CPT for PERM I-140. I'm not sure I understand. I'm currently on B2 status, so they applied for B2. Waiting for PERM approval, I've extended my B2 once, and I think I would need another six months, six more months until my PERM and I-140 get approved. Should I move to day one CPT or extend my B2 for another six months? So if you want to work, and study, day one CPT makes more sense, right? Which one will be the best option so that I don't get any RFEs from the USCIS? See, don't be scared of RFEs. RFEs are a part of life. Now, I'm not concerned about getting an RFE. I'm concerned about winning the case. Okay? So, RFEs by themselves don't have any meaning. Um, if you get an RFE, so what? The question is, is the case winnable from B2 to H1? or from F1 CPT to H1. I think they are both winnable. I have another question. My parents and brothers have their B2 visa interview scheduled for May 31st. If they ask my parents about me, is it a good idea to mention my situation? Hey, always answer questions truthfully. Whatever the consulate, the visa officer asks, tell your parents to answer truthfully. We don't need to play any games or any misrepresentations, uh, make any misrepresentations uh, before the government. Please be very sure of that. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to lock the conference because I am going to be a little bit of a hurry today. So let's just lock the conference and make sure that we attend to people who are already here. The conference is now locked. Okay. Um, anybody has any follow-up questions on this? Press star 5. No new questions. Follow-ups. Okay. And this one is from California. Uh, California, go ahead. I can hear you. Uh, sure. Yes. Uh, I just spoke to you earlier regarding the same situation. So I'm trying to understand how this would work because, uh, like I said, I I also have one year and I, I don't I didn't complete my 140. But even if I move to B2, how does the perm work with B2? Like, isn't the perm attached to an employer? Like, unless yeah, you are actively on an edge. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, let's let's split the. You raised, a, raised two questions. One, is perm attached to a specific employer? Absolutely. Now, the second part you don't have right. Do I have to be currently working for that employer? No. Even if you are not working, they can still file. Okay. Oh. So, even if I'm on H1, like lay, got laid off on H1, even if and you, now on a grace you, period, and if I... Yeah. If there is an employer who wants to uh, employ you, and they file a perm-based green card or started a perm-based green card, you could be not be on their payroll or even be outside U.S. and still get your green card done. No problem. The LCL, LCA, uh, sorry, labor, DOL and all that perm and I-140 can be done with outside of USA even if I'm not employed. Absolutely. Whether you are in USA and not employed no or outside USA and obviously not employed. All of these situations have nothing to do with the green card track. It's a separate track. Okay. Uh, so as long as the company is ready to do this. As long as the okay. company is ready to. Absolutely. Good luck. Oh. Okay. Let me go on to the next frequently asked question. Oh, there was one question which I uh, struck out and I think that question cannot be answered in the uh, in the forums, that has to be a um, a one-on-one -on -one discussion. So that was a question about I-140 pending, I-140 approved, pending 485. It's in the, it's question number five. And uh, either you talk to your own lawyers or send me an email, we'll set up a consultation. 
it's not a it's too long a question and there's too much information that needs to be exchanged okay next frequently asked question and this is also probably relevant to you california procedure to recapture h1b l1 time outside the usa during the last 3 years on h1b i've spent approximately 1 year outside of the us multiple visits to india what is the procedure to recapture and add it back to me my h1b total time so what happens is when you apply for the next h1b um, you apply for 3 years and if only 2 years are left the 1 year will be automatically added to it you are asking for it and you keep asking for extensions until you have no time left including recapture so recapture is just a part of the next extension and if you don't recapture it in the next extension you can do it in the following one there's no time limit number one number two thing um this is very interesting law if you are outside usa on an h1b or l1 for more than 6 months in any 12 month period you should be able to recapture the entire 12 months so not just 6 months but you might be able to recapture the entire 12 months that's how it works i see there's a follow up question from area code 917 which is new york okay i uh, want second yeah new york go ahead i can i can hear you please no it says it new york yeah. so i think it's go ahead go ahead sorry go ahead so uh, it's the lawyer's responsibility to add up all the time that have been out of the country using the i94 right and then while uh, uh, filing of the h1b transfer amendment whatever they need to add that right that's that what we to. we do we don't do the calculations ourselves we'll just ask you have you been outside the us and if you have been outside the us give us a spreadsheet or a uh, table that uh, accounts for the date you left and the date you came back based upon that we calculate how much time we can add i see so my h1b is getting expired in uh, september 2027 that's Achha. what is written on my i797 okay you know there should be one year more to it right so mm. now what is the so hold on hold on one second so hold on for h1 Uh, each extension should be no more than three years. You, they can't give you more than three years. Okay. Um, did they give you the last extension for three years? Yes, from twenty twenty four to twenty twenty seven. So they can never give you more than three. It's not the lawyer's fault. Uh, all you have to do is you'll file another extension um, after the three years are over, and you can recapture whatever time is left over. Are we going to do it in between? Not in between. um you'll do it towards the end of this period 27 if my uh, if sorry last question if my nyw is already approved then adding that extra time on my h1 doesn't give me any kind of advantage no, you, you don't is, need it you, know, you don't you don't need it if your nyw is already approved you can keep extending h1b anyway okay right okay awesome thank you right. so you're welcome good questions guys let's see Do we have any other frequently asked questions? We do not. Okay. Let me now take over the questions that were the normal, non-frequently asked questions. The first one is, uh, what are the prospects for employment-based priority date movement in the new fiscal year? So, government made a comment that it's going to retrogress more. I don't know how it's going to work out. Nobody can truly predict that. I just I'm a common sense person. Common sense says the number of visas has not increased, the number of applicants has not decreased. So obviously um visa dates are going to drag on. Nothing miraculous seems to be happening. Star 5. If you have a follow-up question on this press star 5. Let's go to next question. There was a dismissed domestic violence charge in 21. Police report concerns in visa stamping. Okay, I pleaded not guilty. The case was dismissed in pre-trial with no plea bargain. That's good. While reviewing the police report, I realized some of my statements were made under emotional distress and may not accurately reflect the situation. Um, 
Can you tell me how significantly does the police report content affect the visa stamping? Well, it can, uh, but normally what happens is they, they shouldn't make that a big deal because there was no conviction. Uh, you know, sometimes admissions can amount to um, exclusion or deportation too, even though there's no conviction. So st uh, talk with your lawyers to what extent you should be careful about this. The answer is typically they don't bother about the police reports, but if they wanted to, they could make it an issue. And I think you'll have a problem. Yeah, even if the court dismissed the case. If the visa officer inquires about the dismissed charges, what is the best way to respond? So there's actually a procedure for it. If they want to ask you something about the underlying facts about a criminal charge, they actually have to um, give you a kind of a warning that we are going to ask you some questions and you have to answer truthfully. Uh, and remember, these questions can make you inadmissible to the United States, etc. Uh, I have never in the history of my practice, 33 years, I've never heard of um, CBP or USCIS or consulates doing that. So can they do it? Sure. That's why I said talk to your lawyers before you go. Press star 5. If you have a follow-up question, press star 5, please. Okay, no follow-up question. Next question. H1B to H4 transition for business startup. Can I apply while working and traveling Canadian permanent residents? I and husband both are on H-1B and work for U.S. employers. I want to transition to H-4 to be able to do business in the U.S. and quit my current job. We are Canadian permanent residents and we are cross-border workers. I want to have the ability to travel to and from U.S. during this process. Can I apply for H-4 visa while still working on H-1B and switch later? Uh, yeah, you could do consular processing, right? But you don't really need to apply for that. So there is a difference between H4 and H1. In order to get H1, you need two permissions. Uh, well, you need USCIS and if you want to travel, you need the consulate. But H4 can be directly obtained at the consulate without getting an approval from USCIS. What would you recommend apply H4 from inside or outside? That's your choice. Which is faster? Depends upon the consulate if they are quick enough that would probably be faster. Can I travel from and to US during this time? Um, not if you have a change of status pending, but if you apply through the consulate, then you can travel. My thought, this seems to be the only plausible option, but this will take time as stamping appointment. Yeah, so that's the problem. Apply for H4 for first being in Canada and working on H1B. Then after the stamp, I can quit. Uh, sure, yes. Yes. Uh, the other option is to move first and then quit. I think both those options are open. Um, but like I said, the real choice to be made is whether to apply for a visa um, or to apply for change of status. So if you move to USA, apply for change of status, then you can't travel until you get the H4 approval. And then when you do go outside, you have to go get a visa stamp. Or you can just enter the US with a visa stamp and that way you can come and go as you please. Right? Apply for EAD once you're here. That's what makes sense. Press star 5. If you have a follow-up question, press star 5. Yeah, for me, H4 visa makes more sense in this circumstance. Okay, no follow-up question. Let's go to H1B visa stamping in India. I'm planning to go to India for my H1B visa stamp. wanted to ask um, about the program started when you can apply from USA. Program, pilot program has ended. I'm not sure what was the date of the uh, termination of the program. Uh, should we expect to hear from USCIS any time soon? Well, the visas are really the domain of the State Department, not the USCIS. But I don't know. I don't know what they are going to do with the pilot program. I think it was successful, but I don't know the answer to that. So no idea. Any follow-up questions on this? Press star 5. Okay. Moving on to stuck in limbo, visa rejections after 10 years in the US, selling assets or starting over. If people have stayed here for 10 plus years, bought homes, cars and multiple assets, 
got denied for visa renewal does the us government let them come once to sell their assets you can certainly ask um, for a b1 b2 type visa to come and uh, sell your assets dispose of your liabilities but if that is not working out for some reason you can always look at giving a friend a power of attorney to take care of it for you so that depends upon the state law of the state where the assets are located a check with local lawyers but uh, a power of attorney is a good way to get rid of this uh, issue okay press star 5 if you have a follow up question press star 5 all right let's go on to the next question spouse is f2 rejected uh, so we're looking at the options my initial f2 was rejected 214b when we applied along with my husband he applied again got his f1 approved I went ahead with the B one B two, got it approved. I've remained on that visa and made multiple visits. Now I want to pursue my masters. So is it advisable to change to H four or apply for F one? I see F one has gives you more options such as OPT etc. But H four gives you the option of the EAD. So it depends. If your husband is close to getting his EAD, I'm mean, sorry, his I one forty, then H four would make more sense. if not then f1 would make more sense i'm a legal consultant in india can i continue my sole proprietorship with an f1 visa um you mean work from usa for india no i don't think so does it change if i go for h4 you have the same problem unless you have an ead um yeah i don't think uscis would accept that as a uh, as an acceptable activity even though you are working for a foreign corporation you are working uh, sitting on the us soil is my understanding correct that my spouse's employer can file i140 only after he completes an initial 3 years oh no there is no such law your spouse's employer can file an h uh, an i1 uh, a, a green card even before the employee joins um and they can do it one month after h1b starts or two months or three years whenever there's no such rule okay i think this is um, the all the questions this uh, um writer had yeah so you have uh, anybody has follow up questions i know one person has their hand up any anybody else has a follow up question you can press star 5 let me go to the person who has their hand up they are from massachusetts uh Massachusetts area code 857 i can hear you yeah hi rajesh thank you for answering mm -hmm. um so i i have a follow up question on h4 dependent mm -hmm. um so while i file the petition for uh, h4 um wanted to understand how how long can it take to receive the ead card and uh, a second part on it so can can my spouse start working with the receipt date of the application they cannot start working until the ead is actually approved and okay. the ead can take months upon months government is trying to bring it down to 90 days i don't i can't say that they are successful so it could take multiple months okay so um do you recommend to file the ead uh, like online or then send by mail i don't understand that question So, how can I file the EAD? Is it uh, do you recommend to send it to the government the petition letter by mail or online? Well, it all it's a separate petition. It not it doesn't have um, anything to do with you directly. Um, I I'm it's this question is uh, confusing. I have no idea what you're asking me. Um, but I guess what you're asking me is that do I have to submit it with my H one B extension, etc. that seems to be preferable because it could hurry things along you can talk to your lawyers but if you do it separately uh, okay. it has nothing no connection you don't have to do anything to your status to get your wife converted to h4 or h4ead okay okay good luck thank you you welcome okay let's see area code 937 937 is massachusetts i guess Yeah, Massachusetts. Go ahead. I can hear you. 
हेलो सर थैंक यू फॉर दिस ऑपरचुनिटी आई एम करेंटली ऑन एच फोर वीसा एंड लुकिंग फॉर ऑप्शन टू कन्वर्ट टू एफ वन आई वॉज प्रीवियसली कंसिडरिंग फॉर दिस यू एस बट आई लर्न फ्रॉम अफ यू दैट इट्स अ वेरी टाइम कंज्यूमिंग प्रोसेस बट मैम मैम होल्ड ऑन मैम मैम यू कैन डू इट प्रीमियम प्रोसेसिंग ओके एंड आई ऑल्सो वॉन्टेड टू आस्क यू अबाउट द ट्रेवल टू कैनेडा फॉर एफ वन सैम्पलिंग डू यू थिंक इट्स अ गुड ऑप्शन इट्स अ वायबल ऑप्शन यू नीड टू गेट अ वीजा टू कैनेडा एंड देन यू कैन अप्लाई श्योर ओके बिकॉज आई वॉज वंस रिजेक्टेड एंड एफ वन बैक इन इंडिया सो Uh, do you think yeah. are there any chances of rejection yeah. again if you are rejected once it's always uh, iffy whether a third country uh, consulate will give you the visa you can try but i think your chances are bad if you have had a denial before okay okay good luck yeah. thank you you're welcome uh, somebody had their hand up now they put it down so i don't know all right i'll go back to Hold on one second. I am lost here on my machine. Um, what is the next question? Okay, yeah, I already did this one. So now, oh yeah, these questions are done. So good. I I actually am in a little bit of a hurry today. I could leave a few minutes early. But now, anybody has any question? Press star five. Anybody has any question? Press star five. So far, I have three, four, five people. whose hands are up five people okay in the order that you logged in to the con- to the call i'll try to find 4 to 5 area code 4 to 5 first one second area code 4 to 5 okay 4 to 5 i can hear you washington state go ahead Hi Rajiv ji. Uh, I think I've asked you this question, but I had a follow-up question for this. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, I was working for a state college and getting sponsored me the H1, and mm-hmm. they were willing to convert to a contract position mm-hmm. uh, with a staffing firm. And now my H1 is fixed due to some policy they have in place. They cannot convert it to contract in the same calendar year. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they are willing to convert it to contract on January first, so which is technically six months. And one day after the June 30th, which is the final deadline for the petition, right? So, uh, can I work this out, like take the H-1B? You can't take. You can't. You can't, you can't, sir. This is a this is a statutory regulatory deadline. You can't play around with the with the dates. Even if it is one day out of time, you can't do it. So, if they are willing to let say start on December 25th, ah, then you can. So then you can. No problem at all. And can I go for the counselor talking while I continue on my stem OPT until December? Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, you can. And then uh, switch to contract on January first, and then amend it to change of status. Is that a safe option? Mm, you can do all of those things. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me go to area code seven zero four. North Carolina, go ahead, please. Yeah, good afternoon, Rajiv ji. Uh, although my code is seven zero four, I am calling from Philadelphia. Sir, you uh, have a question related. Base, badal ke aaye hain, to main kya kar sakta hu? Ab bhi yahan koi aisa hi hota nahi, badalna pata hai. Sir, bhi main aapko kahi bhi utha ke base dega, jana padega. Kya karoge? Yeah, of course, no problem. How can I help you today, Batai? So the question. Yeah, the question is, uh, we have a pending I-485, and it's kind of uh, 180 days plus. Good. But uh, that adjustment status was, uh, you know, filed uh, through the previous employer. Now, if if using a C-21 report to another employer or the current employer, how does the ability to pay? They comes into I mean effect I mean they never they ask. The they never ask. Uh, they never ask. In AC twenty one, I have never known. Of course, in the form supplement J, there are I think they ask about the company's finances. But uh, AC twenty one, I have never known the government to ask, and I don't even know if they can legally ask. 
uh, for the ability to pay wages. And if I uh, transfer it to another uh, employer, do the port in AC21, what uh, implications that has? I mean, will the USCIS look into the payment uh, paying capability of this new employer from the day the no no? But I just I just I just I just answered that question. What I said is that they don't even look at the ability to pay wages for subsequent employers once AC21 is kicked in. So if you okay. change employer today on Supplement J using AC21, they're not going to ask. If you change again next month and again next month, they're not going to ask. And uh, the follow-up question I have is, how can I set up an appointment with you? Because I need to get a few more answers. Sure. I have a few more questions. And I, I know it will not be answered in this forum, so I wanted to... No, no, I'm, I, if I have the time, I don't mind answering, but, I'm, you know, time is limited. So you can just send me an email to help at immigration.com. Our uh, consultations are given in 15 minutes chunk, so 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Tell me how much time do you need, and I'll have a call set up accordingly. Okay? Okay, I'll reach out. Thank you very much for you know, replying to You me. are welcome. You are welcome. Good luck. Okay, next one that we have is area code 917, which I believe is New York. 917, go ahead, please. So, Rajiv, I'm uh, planning to get a new visa stamped on my passport uh, with, of the new employers. So, Ji. I was just curious if the, the employer can pay for that appointment or is it our responsibility? No, no. Uh, employer can always pay for you. Uh, there are places you cannot pay and the employer has to pay, but the opposite is not true. If the employer wants to pay for it, absolutely, you can accept it. But it's an optional, right? Since I've already paid yeah, yeah. for a reason. Absolutely. They can reimburse you or they can pay for it. I mean, it's up to them. Yeah, No problem. Right. And they can always say no, right? That's not their responsibility. Of course, well. of course, yeah, yeah. That's not their responsibility for sure. Oh, all right. Sure. Good well, luck, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Next call is Louisiana, I believe. Area code nine eight five. Nine eight five. Go ahead, please. Hello, uh, I have a question. If uh, B1, B2 tourist from Ukraine who uh -huh. has just arrived in the United States can, mm -hmm. can file for TPS under Ukraine designation. Okay, my on the USA side, yeah. Yeah, my knowledge of TPS is very limited. I hardly ever do TPSs. Um, can you file? Can you not file? Sir, I have no idea. So I wish I could okay, help you. My practice is so focused on employment and business-based immigration. I don't want to make guesses and give you bad information. But I'll do this. Yeah, makes sense. If, makes you are, sense. if you are not able yeah. to find the information, uh, just drop me an email to help at immigration.com. I'll ask one of my colleagues um, um, who does a lot of these kind of cases, and they would be able to give us better information. Okay, okay yeah. I actually just posted uh, on uh, immigration.com forum okay. at uh, be conversion to other status or conversion. Yeah, let me yeah see what I happens. Yeah, if it doesn't come through, just let me know. I'll try my best to get you the information. Yeah. All right. Okay, excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the last question today is from California. Area code 650. Go ahead, please. Oh, hello, sir. So, um, so I've been uh, laid off last week and I'm on my H1B visa. Uh -huh. um, so I want to know if I go on a B1, B2 visa, will that 60 days clock stop? Yeah, the way it works is while the B1, B2 is mm -hmm. still pending, your clock is running. And once the 60 days are over, mm -hmm. the clock stops or B1, B2 is approved, the clock stops, whichever is earlier. And what if my B1, B2 doesn't get approved within 60 days? Uh, I, I don't care because as long as you file it within 60 days, you are good. Okay, so I, it doesn't have to be approved as well. No, no, no. It just has to be filed. Filed means in the hands of the USCIS with the proper fees. I tell people to apply for um, B1, B2. If you are a single applicant, do it online. 
it is easier because you know that the case has been delivered, everything is okay. So if you file it online, you can do it even on the 55th, 5-5 five, five day. If you are doing it by mail, do it overnight, maybe on the 50th day, 5-0. Okay. okay. Um, and if while I'm uh, on a B1, B2 visa and I get a job, mm -hmm. do I need to uh, exit and re-enter? No, no. You should be able to transfer. Wait for my article that I have written and that covers this, this, this okay. aspect. So, uh, I'll post it on my okay. uh, blog as well as on my LinkedIn page. Okay. So don't worry, okay. all that um, can be sorry, done. Sorry, just one, one yeah. last question. Mm -hmm. uh, if I choose not to go on B1, B2, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't get a job within the next 60 days, mm -hmm. um, will I be able to, uh, you know, continue to my job search in US and will that visa still be valid? You, you cannot I, stay. It's been six months you you cannot, months. you cannot stay in the United States unless you apply for a B1, B2. You can stay only 60 days yes, within that. If I get a job, if I search for a job from India, I can still come back. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is no problem. Okay. Okay. Fine. They have to do an H1B transfer for you and you will need a visa stamp if you don't okay. already have one and then you can come back. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good luck. Oh, California is okay. back, I think. 626 is California. Yeah. Yeah, California, last question of the day. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, sir. So I was waiting for everybody's question. Didn't want to interrupt. So, uh, no uh, I just wanted to ask, like, for the recapturing of the time, do we have to provide uh, any details of travel dates or yeah. tickets or something? Yeah, like that? that's why I said, no, we tell people, that we tell our clients, give us a table or a spreadsheet <clears throat> that talks about when you left, when you came back, and what evidence you have. So this is not recorded on the I-94, like all the it, history it, of our travel. Like just the travel. just the in just the date in is recorded, not the date out. So the date out is usually uh, oh. uh, from the passport. Some people might have tickets or details of tickets. Um, when you enter, for example, if you go to India, you'll have a passport stamp when you entered. So we kind of extrapolate from that. Uh, okay, cool. Right. Uh, and then one question would be about the B2. If we, if you are transferring to the B2 and then coming back to again H1 and all that, uh, let's say uh, we want to get that new new H1B extension on our on our passport, will it be eligible for Dropbox or? Yes, absolutely, to, uh, absolutely. Just because you applied for an intervening B1, B2 doesn't take away your right to do, do the Dropbox. No problem. Uh, okay, and then this doesn't imp like all the layoffs uh, and whatever change of status we did, everything it doesn't impact anything on our Dropbox. It has no impact on any of that. Right? No impact, no. Okay. Awesome. Uh, and uh, just one thing is, what would you recommend in this situation where I'll, I'll be definitely sending you my resume on help. Uh, yeah, we, I, want question, at, I, I want to look at I want yeah I want to look at the NIW option, but B one B two is definitely a healthy option. Go for it. Okay, yeah, I, uh, so I shouldn't leave the country until I resolve this thing, right? It's, it's easier to find a job if you are, it's easier to find a job if you are in the United States. Okay, okay. makes sense. And for the employer, what kind of, so I, I think there are a lot of job opportunities right now, but then again, I don't want to end up in a situation where somebody's like promising something and then... Uh, well, I already have like, a, like one year, a few months. And yeah, then, I'm then not sure. Some, some of my time. I'm this. not sure I can answer that question. Not a legal issue. That's really a practical issue. Okay. All right. All okay. right. Good luck to you, sir. Thank All you. Right. You're welcome. Okay. Last question. This is from New York. All right. Make it quick, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can yes, hear. Good afternoon. Oh, sorry, is a ma'am. Yes. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, yeah, no worries. Uh, I had a question, a like follow-up question for the same uh, where I was asking about my parents' D2 visa. Um, sorry, sorry, so sorry, sorry. sorry. Ma'am, ma uh, one second. One, one second. What what are we talking about? Um, I, I was asking about that I'm uh, between thinking about between extending my B2 visa or CPT, like mm -hmm. going to CPT. Right, so right. My parents also have the B2 visa. Right, right, right. Uh, and you had said what should they, how should they? 
या हाउ शुड दे रिस्पॉन्ड इफ दे अप्लाई फॉर आई वांटेड टू आस्क या लाइक हाउ लिमिटेड आंसर शुड दे शुड गिव लाइक दे शुड एक्सप्लेन होल सिचुएशन नो नो देखो 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 देयर इज अ देयर इज अ फाइन लाइन between giving too much information and too yeah. little information just talk casually answer the question whatever yeah. they have asked for uh, apni puri ram katha sunane mm-hmm. ki avashyakta nahi hai you don't have to tell them your life story exactly yeah. but at the same time you don't you yeah. don't want to come across as somebody who's trying to hide things you know it's a casual conversation yeah. ma'am usually they have like 20 seconds mm-hmm. to talk to you it's not like they're going to talk there for half an hour yeah. so whatever they ask answer right. truthfully Okay, so right. simple and like sweet is better. Absolutely like, simple and precise. Story. Simple and precise. Okay. Okay. Precise. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, folks. I am. Um, I'm leaving a couple of minutes early today. It was great to see you all. Talk to you all. See you again next Thursday on LinkedIn Audio. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.